Hello everyone and welcome to a, another interview here on A Healthy Dose of Fran. Thank you all for tuning in. Obviously you can see I have a very special guest here with me today. You may recognize their face if you're following a certain project but if you're an Avatar fan I'm surprised you're not following this project already and that is from official J&J Jonathan Garlow or Johnny as well if you want to be you know cool like that. Um, <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> thank you so much for coming to speak with me about your project. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> just so they know, this has been a long time coming. We just found out that the first time we had spoke with each other was over two years ago. So <laughs> this meeting has been long in the making. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and I'm very, very excited. It may have taken a while, but we're here. And you know what? That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so uh, you're from Official J&J, &J, and uh, well, if people ha ha recognize that name, they'll know the uh, project that we are here to talk about, because you are doing an Avatar fan film entitled Avatar, The Last of the Airbenders, and um, it's very exciting, and it looks pretty good, and the trailer is actually coming out the Friday after this interview. It's coming out soon, about two days when this uh, goes out to everyone. But um, what can you tell us about the inspiration behind creating J, J Studios and in particular, the story of Avatar, The Last of the Airbenders? Yeah, um, so J, J Studios was named after me and my brother. My brother's name is Justin and you've probably seen his face on the uh, promo videos. And usually he, he does a much better job at getting from the camera and he usually runs our social media, including like our TikTok. Um, I really prefer to be behind the camera and filming, <laughs> but uh, so we, we've always been making movies since we were kids and um, we kind of always knew that we were, we were going to start a little film studio, but it was just a matter of time. Like we were both finishing up school and, you know, it's like once we kind of rolled out of school and started our careers, like I'm, I'm finishing up grad school right now. He's like, Hey, you know, I feel like there's not gonna be a much better time. And so um we, we kind of did some original projects, but I'm like, you know what? I feel like to really kick this off, I really want to start with a passion project. And that would be something that I've always wanted to make was a short live action Avatar The Last Airbender fan film. And I think most of you, uh, if you're as old as me, can remember if you saw the 2010 film, um, how terrible it was and uh, disheartening. A lot of us were either like discouraged, like, hey, that, there goes our chance to have a decent live action film. And for me, I remember leaving I'm like, that was terrible. Hollywood sucks. Maybe one day I will, when I'm older, I will make a, uh, a live action short film. Um, and believe it or not, that's come sooner than I thought it would. And it's been quite the journey. Fran and I were just discussing this. It's, it's been exciting. It's been awesome. It's been really hard. It's been really stressful. A lot of anxiety around it, but um, I think that's a good sign when you're doing something and you know that you love and you definitely want to put a lot of heart into because it means a lot to you personally. But then I also know I'm not alone in that. Avatar doesn't mean a lot to just me. I know it means a lot to millions of people. And for the small percentage of those fans that have become aware of a project have been huge supporters and just like really pushing us like, hey, you guys got this. And I swear to some nights where, you know, I get back from work I get back from work and I'm just like trying to edit at night at 2 a.m. or, you know, we had to do a reshoot. So I'm sewing a, a costume at like 3 a.m. and I have finals the next day. I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> but it's like, well, I'm doing this because I love doing this. And it's kind of cool because I have, we have this whole like kind of community and family now, like you guys got this, keep going, Doran, keep doing it. And that actually, they don't know it, but that means, that means a lot. That really does. It's not like these words just come in and out. Like, knowing that there's really hundreds of other vocal supporters out there saying, yeah, you guys got this. Don't, don't, don't stress yourselves over it. Like we're all here to support. And a lot of people are super understanding. They understand it's a fan film. They know we're not doing this full time. And so it's just been so like, that's, that's been a really nice part of having that. has been the overwhelming majority of uh, supporters for us saying, Hey, we got you guys. Don't worry. Like we understand there's a lot of work that has to go into this and we know it's a fan film, so it's not going to be like the Hollywood grade, like top tier, but we still plan for it to be the best we can. So hopefully, hopefully you guys like it. Oh, well, I'm sure we will, because uh, just to make a few people jealous. So I've seen the trailer that is coming Friday for the rest of you 
peasants. But um, <laughs> just from my own point of view, it's looking pretty good. So I'm very excited for everyone else to see it. But just in general, like seeing the behind the scenes stuff from you guys on your social media, like your TikTok and your Instagram, which is a live action avatar, isn't it? That Yeah, yeah no, live action avatar is usually the handle we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and just seeing all the work that's been put into it and just the enjoyment that everyone seems to be having like oh, just a few of the like uh, you you guys have made some great like hilarious level tiktoks as well of a few of the things uh that you've done to get to the different stages and uh it just shows the level of dedication but the fact that you guys have been having fun whilst doing it as well i think is like the main thing that probably has brought in more support because when people can see that you've enjoyed what you've been doing and yeah. there is a lot of love and passion going into it you're going to get more people behind you and I think that's definitely like the biggest selling point of like Avatar The Last of the Airbenders is that everyone has been passionate and everyone has been throwing all of their support behind it into actually creating this project yeah um which obviously you don't always see with the Hollywood projects um of that level as well which <laughs> is unfortunate but at least in this case we're seeing it with this project in particular yeah no and uh, i would totally agree with that i think it's been a huge huge benefit and blessing just to kind of work on something that you know a lot of people are just excited to work on and when we kind of we have like our core crew and then we pull more people in who said hey if you guys want to help out you can um everyone was just there because they wanted to make an avatar film and mm -hmm. it's because they loved avatar and so it was kind of cool just to be in that environment of people working on something because we just want to have fun and make something really cool. And, um, and like, there's obviously their whole component of like, well, if you want, you can have fun, but you got to get some stuff done. Like there's that stressful component. And that's something that I try to usually keep in myself and the core team. <laughs> but uh, um, in spite of the struggle, like it's still so much, it's just exciting. Like it's so great. Like I get excited when I put together a sequence that we, we worked on, you know, we choreographed, we shot and we added the visual effects and we're like, oh, man, this looks so great. And so, and that, that definitely translates to when we're shooting the film, like when we, we're working with the actors and stuff and you can ask them, Daniel and Bryce and Alina, those are our three leads, man, we put them through the ringer. <laughs> like some of the fight sequences we we shot we did one part of the fight sequence that literally we started we got at 5 a.m and finished at 6 p.m and wow. by the end we, we had to cut because the actors were fainting like they were so tired and we were all just dead tired and um but that's what ended our shooting day because like okay I guess we're done like <laughs> we were all told and like you know just totally sold out but um so but in in spite of the physical emotional stress it's still worth it and it's mm. so much fun because we're all like, let's do this, let's kill this. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. we love to hear that. And um, just mentioning of your your lead actors as well. So, um, the names that you've just mentioned there are obviously to do with the the main characters. But um, from uh, your Indiegogo campaign, just elsewhere in your social media as well, you've mentioned how the last of the Airbenders is set after the Airbender genocide, as some people seen the, the special special looks into it. Um, but it's following uh, the the last Airbender, at current Jonan, who is uh, Bryce, isn't it? The the yeah. actor, yeah, yeah. Um, who is fleeing the capture from an, a firebending <laughs> assassin, um, which is in the form of Daniel, the actor, um, and just kind of in general, just from that, like it's just a really interesting premise. This idea, because like we have mentions and fan theories about Airbenders who survived the genocide and tried to kind of make a life for themselves. What sort of inspired this story and why did you choose this particular timeline in the world of Avatar to make your film about? Yeah, well, it, it's something that could have... So one of the big reasons why I wanted to do it was because it's one of those stories where it, it involves a lot of mystery. Mm. Um, and it's one of the parts of the Avatar verse that we don't actually hear a lot about. But you're like, that would be a really interesting time, right? sort of this post, um, well, I guess it'd be, if that's the initiation or that's the inception of the Hundred Year War, which is a really interesting time in the Avatar story. And so I'm like, and the idea of a people that, a people that was eradicated and now there's only a few left of them trying to survive. I'm like, that's a really interesting story, you know? And that's, that's kind of predicated on real life ex 
real life situations. Like we hear it all the time in our history books of nations that were destroyed and then only a few remnants of the nation were able to survive and kind of continue their traditions and stuff, which is a very powerful emotional aspect. And I'm like, that was right there in our, one of our favorite, you know, universes, the Avatarverse. I'm like, that's gotta be told. That's gotta be expounded on. And obviously being a much smaller fan, um, fan film and smaller budget, that's something that was also realistic for us to do, but Mm -hmm. It was like, let's do it. This is going to be great. This is exciting. Um, And I wrote the story probably back in 2020, January. So I worked on it from, I think, like December 2019 to January 2020. And, you know, I kind of ran it past a bunch of friends and family and said, hey, what do you guys think of this? And uh, they're like, I think it'd be a great story to tell. And I'm like, all right, we're going to do this one then. And uh, inspiration for, like, we got to have, you know, just being a fan of the series uh, they talk about in, I think, I think it's mentioned, you know, I read a lot about it on um, Avatar Wiki. Like you can go there and, and they have sort of like the canonized story about what happened during that time. And it talks about how Fire Lord Sozin actually tried to lure in airbenders with like these safe havens, but they were fake. And so these airbenders went there and actually they were traps and Fire Nation guards or our nation armies were there to kill them. And so I'm like, it would be really interesting to kind of show the, the other side where you have these fire nation assassins that go out and hunt for the airbenders, which would kind of create this sort of eerie, you know, mm. tone of like, you know, the, what was it? The predator, right? Being hunted. And that's definitely something we want to explore in our film. And it, it's just, it's a really interesting concept as well. Like I know you did um, a video on your channel as well about the possibility of airbenders surviving. Um, but even just from the cuts that we've gotten and also the behind the scenes, it is, and like you say there, it's a, in the show, it was a reflection of things that have happened in the real world in the sense, like the the travesty that can come from that of like seeing Ang's reaction to finding out that day that his entire right. nation right. has been gone. And exploring the emotions of that in in the film that you are producing is is such a really interesting idea and it's it's going to be interesting to see how it comes out on the screen as well because the emotional beats of as you mentioned this has only recently happened this genocide and his main character is in a sense kind of struggling to figure out what to do next he's being hunted he is seemingly one of the last of his people he doesn't know what to do and having that emotional weight of being one of the last, like Ang was in the series and things like that, is, it's, I don't even know how to describe it, I'm just like, I'm in awe of the idea of this project that you are all producing, and the emotion that's gone into it as well, like the length of time that it took to write this script, and the passion that's put into it, and the fear as well that you mentioned of these assassins, because it's, it's very much a real thing that would you would see and would believe would happen in the avatar universe which is i think what adds this additional benefit to you guys is short story uh, short film not short story that's the author and me apologies <laughs> um, <I know. laughs> um is that it's exploring this additional darker side that would be in the avatar universe like there was a genocide in avatar there would yeah. be this darker side of people like going out and hunting people in a sense for sport to make sure that their power stays there and um i'm really looking forward to see how that comes out on screen and major props to you guys as well for going to that that darker side of the of the story of exploring the the it's not the best way to say the angst of these situations of what do you do when your people are gone right yeah Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just a cool part of the Avatar canon. And so to kind of expound on that um, really was, just really was exciting. It was really fun. And y- you all know how it is, just being a fan of a series, you always kind of imagine, imagine if this happened and that happened. And a big part was that we wanted to respect the story. We didn't want to overstep our bounds. Like, oh, this is, because we know this isn't canon, our story, but it was cool to kind of like um, uh, elaborate on what is canon right it's like what if this happened and what if this also happened and so yeah it was a cool cool component to definitely um detail out like the fear fearful aspect of it it is it is really cool 
no definitely um and kind of going into that as well because obviously you guys are indie film creators and obviously some being an indie creator is always a struggle you mentioned the stresses and anxieties that came with it but in general what would you say was the biggest challenge for J&J Studios for making the last of the airbenders film and any production woes that came with it and yeah, this could go on and on. But uh, I think the biggest challenge was this is the first production we did that was this big. And this is a, you know, this is a multi-talented team that has come together to make this happen. So, you know, we have a team of seven visual effects artists. Um, we have a production team of, uh, it varies because some people come in, they come out like, hey, are they able to help out with this one part? And then I got to go because they have their full-time job. So it's like, Altogether, there's about over 20 people who've worked, who have come and go and, and who have worked on the project. And we have a continued core of um, about 11 people between the VFX team. Sorry, more than that. There's like 15 people between the VFX team and then the production team that's actually like editing and filming and getting stuff done. And the VFX team that works on the visual, the visual effects shots. So that was like the biggest part was like, whoa, this is like a big production. I've always done freelance work. And so... For me, I've always just grabbed my camera, grab a few buddies, and we, we shoot our films. And that's how it was. Very much like independent uh, freelance. And um, doing this production, it was like, oh, we got to actually, you know, it's heavy, heavy on the visual effects side. And so there's a lot of planning that goes into trying to do a film like this. And being indie as we are, um, we don't have a lot of time to prep. It's not like, hey, let's fly you guys out for a week to choreograph, to um, you know, rehearse and all this stuff. It's like we actually don't have the resources to do that. So we meet our actors or we meet our meet our crew, like, hey, this is what we got to do. We fly in for a weekend, we do a like sort of like a shotgun, you know, meeting and kind of overview of what we're gonna be doing, and then we just go for it. And there's a lot of times, you know, people just had to just like improvise and it's amazing though but it, it goes to show when you bring a lot of talented people who love avatar mm. it turns out amazing because they're like oh like it doesn't take a lot of thought to be like how do we make this really good it's like well we know the story we know we know the elements that make the story great and we know how to convey that and so it it's been a, it's been awesome it's been a really great hard process but it's um like you mentioned that those are the hardest parts where it's like, Hey, we don't got a lot of time and resources, but we got to make this happen. And so we, in spite of the challenges and like, like I'll give you an example, like we had to do this shoot, which was up on a mountain, you know, it's a four minute drive up to the top and we get there and it turns out there are thousands of mosquitoes and we are all eating alive. So I'm like, you know what, get you guys, get back in the cars. I'm going to hop in my car. I'm going to drive back down the mountain and go get some, you know, insect repellent spray. As I'm getting down, I get stuck in traffic. So I don't get back up the mountain for another three hours. So we now lost three hours in our shooting day. And, you know, these time is of the essence. It's like, we don't get, th that's just, the, um, that's just a lot of time and money. And what's crazy is, you know, even with our crowdfunder, uh, I mentioned this to Fran, that money is sacred. We, that money, we treat it as it is, it's not our money, it's the fans. And so that has to be used very specifically for things like that can pay for uh, flights, that can pay for visual effects assets and um, pretty much all assets that go into editing and for equipment for filming and stuff like that. And so anything with like gas or buying, you know, like food and stuff that we put on ourselves, like, hey, you know, we can at least, you know, this is what our work can at least pay for. And so, we it's just like stuff like that it's just it's just very frustrating because you're like man like i just want to get this done and so we can get this out but when you don't work on something full-time and fran can attest to this when you're not working on something full-time because you have school and work it is so difficult to uh to just uh get things out as fast as you want them to so it's like the passion the energy is still there but man that's that's where it's frustrating so but you know, after a year and a half of just diligent, constantly working on this, like there's not a week that goes by that I don't work on the film. Um, it's amazing how slow the progress can be, but you're like, after a year and a half, like, whoa, like we're, we're almost there. We're like, we're so close. And so <laughs> it's, it's a good feeling, but that's, that was, that was definitely the biggest part, the hardest part, just having a bigger production, 
kind of slowly pushing through the, like the challenges and um you know obstacles and yeah mm-hmm. there's I can go on and on but I don't want to bore people because there are so many random little things like that that happen like I had either, either having a van breakdown or you know getting stuck in traffic to get to our destination and you know we shot a lot of the film in California which if you guys don't know California has you know even as COVID was like still happening there's somehow still traffic you're like what (laughs) how is this possible yeah yeah i I, even in the uk we well we are aware of uh california as the traffic state (laughs) (laughs) yeah it really is but um i guess kind of going into a more sort of positive light in that like what would you say were the the like the positives and the advantages of being an indie film production Full creative control. So we don't have any Hollywood execs saying, hey, put this in, take this out, make this person older, add in this inappropriate scene, take this part out. You know, it's like, we don't have to worry about any of that. Um, that's, that, is, that is why, you know, people ask me all the time, like, man, hopefully you guys get noticed and get picked up by Netflix and you guys can, or whatever, or get picked up by another company, you do this professionally. And in theory, and Fran knows this, in theory, that sounds cool. And you have to know what you're, but, but you have to be well aware of what you'll be giving up. And mm-hmm. that's really hard because what makes this film, what will make this film great is the fact that it was not just one, but multiple Avatar, passionate Avatar fans who want to make a decent Avatar movie and then share that with, with the rest of the fan base. And there was no Hollywood exec saying, hey, you should do this, you should do that, add this, because this might make us more money. You know, they have no idea what they're talking about. They're always serving my money and ends up ruining the story. We don't have any of that on this. Everything you'll see, and, and Fran can attest to this, everything you see in the trailer is there's a lot of juicy Avatar Easter eggs because we are Avatar fans. We, we know what we, want to, what we would want to see in a movie. And consequently, that's what the fan base would want to see in the movie. And so, and it's frustrating because we wish we had more time and resources um, and maybe eventually we'll get there and sooner than later, but we're like, man, we just want to make this the best we possibly could, not just for ourselves, but for everyone. Cause we know people are going to be so excited about this because we're excited about it as Avatar fans, like, wait till the fan base sees this. They're going to love this. So that is, that's the best part by far, not having any other superior who has no idea what they're talking about telling us what to do. It's like, nope, we get to make it as Avatar fans should have it. Yeah, and I, I can hear you with that. Like, that is definitely like, even when I wrote down this question and was saying this, like, I feel like I know what the answer is gonna be because that's what I've heard a lot from like indie film makers and even like indie authors and anyone who has that creative control, you know that that is the benefit because like anyone who is going down a traditional route, it is still like a benefit because like you, it can help you out with your career in general and things like that, but there are a lot of things that you have to give up and just seeing the trailer and seeing the passion behind this project, you can see the benefits more than anything of going indie down this route because everyone is working so hard for it. And it's, it's going in the direction that, you know, it should be as an avatar fan without, like you said, the oversight of someone kind of guiding it in the direction that they want it to go. Right. Um, and you can see that in everything that you guys have shown and shared and even like um, the Zuko short that you guys did and, and all the other stuff that you've done, even the, uh, what was it, the uh, Among Us short that you guys did as well. Yeah. Even that, you can see just like <laughs> the fun that you're all having with yeah. this project and all the projects that are, are coming as well. And um, I, I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure the fans of you guys appreciate that more than anything, seeing how happy you guys are and like (laughs) just the joy that goes into making these sort of things because if people don't have joy and interest in what they're doing you know people are going to notice and I don't think that's the case with you guys everyone can tell that you are loving what you are doing and it the the proof will be in the pudding when uh when the film comes out (laughs) yeah yeah hopefully you guys see it or hopefully when you guys see you'll you'll see just the the parts that we just had a lot of fun at and you'll you'll get get getty too with the easter eggs that we threw in there so we're we're excited yeah definitely so uh kind of going to the last little bit um what can you tell uh your audience about what they can expect from avatar the last of the airbenders and 
I know it. I know because I've seen it. <laughs> that is in the trailer, but also the possible release date. Yeah. So um, the possible release date is in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, definitely what to expect. Um, I think what the expectation should be, what we kind of expect, um, is just to see a really cool short story of this airbender fighting for his life and also the other characters that are involved kind of how they have to they have to play their part too um and i hope that you just kind of it just kind of restores your faith in in what avatar can do right and i'm not talking about the animated uh series because that's perfect you know people ask like hey would you ever try to recreate the animated and i'm like no because it's perfect you know like i i I think Netflix is doing it. Cool. Power to them. Great. Don't mess it up. I think it looks okay. Um, but you know, I, you guys know me, I have little faith in Hollywood ever. Um, but I'm like, you don't need to make a live action out, out of everything. Like Lion King did not need to be a live action movie. The cartoon was perfect. Why was that made into live action? And that's how I feel with Avatar. Why, why did, why would it, the last Airbender and Korra have to be made into live action? If I could do animated, I wouldn't. I love animated, but uh, live action in a lot of ways is actually easier to do, right? <laughs> it's actually cheaper. But um, um, yeah, with this story, it's just this is just my kind of like our contribution, our homage to a universe that has meant so much to me as a kid growing up. And I hope you guys feel that same kind of honor. Uh, no point intended there, but that, that same homage and honor um, to... I know the universe that has meant a lot in your lives, you know, and I hope that you just enjoy it. Um, you'll see there's lots of imperfections. It's a fan film. It's there's parts, the imperfections that you notice, trust me, we've noticed. <laughs> and it's hard to push past this part, but we recognize, Hey, you know, this is the best we can do for, you know, again, the resources that we have, but we hope you guys just really enjoy it. And I hope this Friday, you guys have a blast watching the trailer. Um, I know Fran, she said she really enjoyed it. And, um, that made, that made us happy to hear. I knew she would because as Avatar fans, we all love it. <laughs> it it's going to be fun. I'm loving the confidence. That is a good thing as well. <laughs> like the confidence. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. Confidence. Hell yeah, they're going to love it. How could they oh, not? It's Avatar, confident. man. Yeah, I'm saying confident. Then we get off. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope we like it. <laughs> But, and, and I know I'm, maybe I'm putting my career on the line, but I definitely did. So I can guarantee at least my audience will because they watch me they have they have a similar taste i, okay, I good, assume good. Yeah, for the people who don't well like then at least i know them. this audience will enjoy it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so go watch it friday guys i'll put the link in when it comes out as well in the description for anyone who watches this after the trailer's already come out but um yeah this has been great so just to kind of finish it off here um what sort of <laughs> words of wisdom would you give for any budding indie film creators out there Keep working on your craft, you know, be, be critical of yourself, but be, but don't be, how do you say overbearing? Like, don't, don't be detrimental to yourself. So allow yourself to be humble. That's one thing I have to say, accept critique, accept correction. This film isn't great because I made it. It's great because we all made it. Um, and yes, I am the director of the project, but any smart filmmaker will tell you the director is not the whole you know, Shabin, it's the whole team, the VFX team, the production, the sound, the sound, like everyone, it's a team effort making something like this. So if you are doing filmmaking, if you're doing writing or something, accept critique, it's hard. It really is. It, it's hurtful in some, some ways, mm. but be, be wise, like accept, allow it, your work to be critiqued and really look with like fresh eyes say, Hey, is this person right? Would this actually make my story better? Or would this make my art better? And you know, my whole life, I actually grew up doing illustration. My mom and my grandma were actually illustrators. My grandma, I don't know if this means anything to anyone, but my grandma's actually in the Hall of Fame. Her name is Elaine Duello. She's a renowned uh, um, romance novel artist. And she was all about like, you need to accept feedback. You need to accept critique. And so that's something that I feel like got my filmmaking better sooner than, than later because I just accepted people to tear my work apart saying, hey, change this, do this, don't do that, do that. And I was like, I was able to look and see like, okay, yeah, you're right. I should change that. Okay, I should change that. 
And um, it, it's just, I think that's the best advice I can give. Allow your work to be critiqued because um, I see some people who are like, oh, I'm really passionate about this. I love this. I'm like, that's awesome. But you suck at it. So allow yourself to get better at it and allow people to give you correction. Um, and that's how, I was, that's how I was with film. And I'm still like that with film. People correct me all the time. And, you know, our, my team says, hey, I don't really think that's good. We should change this. And I'm like, I spent eight hours on this shot. How do you say it's not good? And then I look at it a week later, I'm like, you're totally right. <laughs> and so that's very humbling to like, it's like that you work so hard and then someone's like, nah, not fair enough. You're like, Arr. but you realize if you can look with fresh eyes and see truth in what they're saying, then that's going to help you so much and you're going to advance so much faster and you're going to be on top that much quicker. So that's why um, one of the things I asked Fran when she saw the trial, I'm like, hey, give me feedback. Because now, now I, I, I love feedback because I can see, oh, huh, I didn't think of that before. Um, so I should really like keep an eye out for that because now I know moving forward, I'm like, that's just power to me, you know? So mm. yeah, take feedback, go kill it. <laughs> <laughs> all right awesome thank you so much for that that is that will definitely well hopefully it'll be useful i'm sure it will be it's useful to me so that's currently the only thing that matters that was already useful to me so i'll be able to use that going forward but um jonathan thank you so much for coming on to talk about the last and what oh god avatar the last of the avengers sorry it's late my time i'm already struggling i know poor, um, poor girl. i'm so sorry <laughs> no, no, it's, it's my fault guys i made friends say it this late so <laughs> Yeah, this poor girl break. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good. But seriously, thank you so much for coming on to speak with me. It's been an absolute delight. And I hope that people rally behind this project and all the things that you're coming out in future. Guys, go to, I've got them linked in the description box. All the things that they are planning to do in future look freaking amazing. So go and support Official <laughs> J&J, this project, the actors of the project, all that sort of good stuff. This is an order. It's not really a request. It's kind of, you really should do it if you if you want to enjoy good things in your life um <laughs> but yeah jonathan thank you again so much i really do appreciate you coming to speak with me thanks for inviting me this has been awesome all right brilliant so for everyone watching obviously all the links are in the description box for official jj and avatar the last of the airbenders <laughs> and um yeah go check them out let me know if you watch the trailer. So come back to this video afterwards. After you watch the trailer, let me know what you thought of it as well. Of course, leave me a comment on the trailer as well. Be nice. Kindness is always the best thing. <laughs> um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. <laughs>